Hi, Julie Usher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. You know the fancy French macaron that's been the darling of bakeries for the last several years? Well, as pretty as it is, it's actually very, very finicky. So today I've got a much more agreeable recipe for you. I call it the country cousin of the macaron. It's called Dacquoise, and it uses many of the same ingredients, ground nuts and egg whites. Basically, it's a meringue into which ground nuts are folded and it's crunchy and delightful without all the fuss and frills of the macaron. What we're gonna be using it for today is to make ice cream sandwiches, which are perfect for summer picnics, but I also use it as layers in cakes. I also layer it with buttercream, which I talk about in another video to make little tiny pedophores and torts. So it's very, very versatile. This video is also kind of a double feature, if you will. So in addition to talking about how to make the dacquoise, I'm going to be sharing with you the highlights of a special chocolate rosemary ice cream recipe that I have on my website, as well as some fun packaging tips, both for the ice cream and for the ice cream sandwiches. So what do you need for this lovely nut meringue recipe? Basically, it's just a five ingredient recipe. So it's very, very easy. The primary ingredient is nuts. I've got toasted pecans here. You can use almost any other nut and I substitute them generally in a one to one ratio. I've got one and a half cups of nuts here. They have been pre-toasted, meaning I put them in the oven at about 375 degrees for eight to 10 minutes, just until you could smell their lovely smell wafting in the kitchen. Then I took them out and cooled them down. You want to use them toasted and cooled. To the nuts, you'll be adding some sugar Actually, the recipe calls for one cup of sugar, a half a cup will be going in the nuts, and the other half cup will be going in the six large egg whites. It's very important to divide the sugar in this recipe. If you don't, you'll get a very different consistency on this product. Don't ask me why, don't ask me to explain the science, but if you put all the sugar in the egg whites or all the sugar in the nuts, you're gonna end up with a very spongy meringue as opposed to something nice and crunchy. Six large egg whites here, they should be cold. A quarter teaspoon cream of tartar, which acts as a stabilizer in the egg whites, and two tablespoons of cornstarch, which are gonna go in with the nuts when we grind them. Lastly, flavoring. And choose a pure flavoring. I'm gonna use vanilla in this that marries well with a nut of choice. Dequas are like any other meringue in that you want to get them in the oven when they're at their maximum fluffiness and height. So before you do anything with this recipe, you should prep your pan that you're gonna use and also preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. By prepping the pan, I mean drawing tracing guides if you feel you need them. I wanted relatively perfect circles, so I traced with a food safe marker, or you could use a non-food safe marker, on one side of parchment, turned it down so that the marker doesn't get into the meringue as it bakes, and just tacked it down to the back side of my cookie sheet with a little bit of shortening or butter so that the parchment paper doesn't fly around. I like to back, bake on the back side of my pan simply because I think I get more even browning and cooking this way. And when they're done, it's much more easy to pull them off the sheet tray onto a cooling rack, as you'll see when they come out of the oven. In the spirit of having your meringue super fluffy when it goes in the oven, you want to prepare everything but the egg whites first. So the first step in actually handling of ingredients is to grind your nuts with half of the sugar, so I've got half of the one cup or half a cup of sugar in with the nuts here. And we're gonna toss in a little cornstarch as well. This is two tablespoons of cornstarch. And what this does is it prevents the nuts from turning into a paste if you were to happen to over grind. This won't turn into pecan butter, but will instead stay a nice fine powder. You still have to wash them though and take care not to over grind. So we're grinding these into a fine powder. So you just get a hint of the nice nutty texture in the meringue when it's fully baked. This will just take but a few seconds. I often pulse it. So here's the texture you're aiming for, something this coarse or even finer you can go. But I like a little bit of texture to the deck quasi. The key thing to do is just grind it fine enough that the nuts are gonna pass through your piping bag and we're gonna be piping with a coupler which is at least half an inch wide so these shouldn't be a problem. I've got six cold egg whites. I mentioned they're cold and I'm very specific about that. There is belief that warm egg whites will whip up to higher volume. In my experience, I haven't noticed a perceptible difference in that. What I have noticed is that cold egg whites tend to whip more firmly and hold their shape longer in a pastry bag. So I really like to use 
cold whites when I'm making a stiff meringue that I want to hold its shape, such as in my meringue baskets I did a while ago, and to a lesser extent for these, these decoise. In goes the cream of tartar, which acts as a stabilizer. I'm just going to give it a quick mix with the whisk from the mixer to get it distributed. And then we'll start beating this on medium speed until it's just frothy, and then we'll gradually add the remaining half cup sugar. Remember, I said that it's important to add these in two separate additions, and that will have a great impact on texture. If you were to have put the entire one cup in here, you'd still get a meringue, but your meringue would end up baking very, very differently. And I don't quite understand the science there, but trust me that it's true. The sugar is added gradually so the meringue that you started making doesn't completely deflate. If you, were at it in, if you were to add it in one big dump, it might deflate. I'm just stopping in between whipping to scrape down the sides, make sure all the sugar is in. I want to whip this until I can't feel any sugar in here. The sugar is dissolved and to relatively stiff peaks. So we're looking forward to form stiff peaks but not dry peaks. These are still soft peaks. You can see how the egg white is kind of flopping over once I drop it off the whisk. I want to beat them a little stiffer. It's not the end of the world if you under or over beat this recipe. It's very forgiving. As I said, it's sort of the country version of the French macaroon. It's not at all finicky and you'll get a good result almost any way you beat these. I think that's looking pretty good. When it starts clinging to the beater just a little bit, in my opinion, it's ready when they're relatively stiff peaks. When you knock it off the whisk, the peaks hold their shape. If the meringue starts to creep up the whisk, it's probably overbeaten. And that's, again, not the end of the world. It just means that you're going to have to work harder to get your nuts in. You're going to have to fold more, and you'll probably end up deflating the meringue more in the process. At this point would be the time to add flavoring and food coloring if you're going to color this, but I'm not going to. I added two teaspoons of vanilla, but you can flavor with just about any extract. And we're just going to whip that through. Okay, so while they're still at their maximum fluffiness, you want to incorporate the nuts. And there are two key things to maintain fluffiness of the whites. The first, I find, is to transfer into a broader bowl, a broader, shallower bowl than the actual mixer bowl. Because if you fold in the mixer bowl, it takes, a lot of, of, it takes a lot to get the nuts all the way down to the bottom, and you tend to overfold when, you, when you're folding into a very narrow bowl. The other thing to remember is to add the nuts slowly. I generally do it in three additions and, so that you don't deflate the meringue all at once by dumping them on top. So we'll just sprinkle them over the top in roughly thirds. And then we're going to be using a folding motion, which is a cut of, cutting down through the center, folding the spatula over. I like to use a very broad spatula as well. That's other, another key trick. If you use a small spatula, you have to stir more, or rather fold more, to get the same coverage and mixing. Here I can use a few broad strokes and get those nuts evenly distributed fairly quickly. Second addition of nuts, trying to sprinkle them more uniformly over the surface. Just again to maintain volume. I'm rotating the bowl as I fold too. That also prevents me from overfolding in one particular area. I'm constantly rotating and attacking a different part of the mixture. So this is not at all a stirring motion and not at all a vigorous motion. Stirring motion would be like this. You know, we're not doing that. We're lifting and turning. Whoops, dumped a little out of the bowl there. That's going to need just a few more strokes, and then it's ready to be piped. You just don't want to see any dry clumps of nuts. But you see I've maintained most of the volume in that process. To pipe these three inch rings, I've got my pastry bag fitted with a coupler. As I said, it's about a half an inch or a little bit more wide, and that's enough to let the nuts pass and to fill these relatively efficiently. 
turn down the top of the bag so I can easily shovel in a lot of mixture without mucking up the top of the bag, which is where what I'm going to tie down to create a grip. If you don't do this, you end up with a lot of meringue popping out the top and making the piping process a lot messier than it needs to be. So twist to create my grip and I want to do a trial push out here to make sure it's flowing nicely before I start piping. I tend to prefer to pipe rings starting from the outside going in just so that I make sure I'm tracing the entire circle, filling it really nicely. And I'm not dragging the tip. You'll notice that I'm letting the meringue kind of fall. So I'm getting the full thickness of the coupler, about a half an inch or more of meringue piped onto the cookie sheets. You could smooth them with a small offset spatula if you'd like, but we're making ice cream sandwiches that are gonna be pretty rustic. So I, li I like them looking a little rough. It's nice to hold your bag at a 90 degree angle and to be kind of overhead when you're piping to make sure you're filling the entire space evenly. Now baking time is a function of the size of the decoise that you've piped. These are three inches. They typically bake 25 to 30 minutes at 325. I like them when they're nice and crisp on the outside and just slightly chewy on the inside. So they've got a mixture of textures. You can bake them less long and get something more chewy and you can bake them even longer and get something very, very crunchy. So they're very versatile in terms of their texture. We're gonna try them at the 25 to 30 minute mark and see how they come out. Here's what they look like coming out of the oven after about 30 minutes. They're lightly browned, firm to the touch. If I had to push harder, I'd squish through to this soft, chewy inside, which I love. They're not quite ready to be taken off the pan yet. I like to let them cool slightly on a cooling rack on the pan for no more than a minute or so. If I try to pull them too soon, I can sometimes tear them because they're gonna be softer on the underside. But if I cool them for one to two minutes, I can come back and usually pretty easily peel them off. If you can't easily peel them off, then that's an indicator they're underbaked and you might wanna throw them back in the oven for a couple minutes. Okay, so I'd like to complete the cooling process as soon as I can pull them off, and as I said, that's usually after one or two minutes, and they come off nicely. If I let them cool completely on the pan, what happens is the hot air trap ends up condensing underneath, and you get a really soggy underside, and I want to preserve that nice, crunchy underside. That one popped off on its own. The decoise are completely cool and we're ready to fill them with ice cream. Of course, you want them completely cool before you fill or you'll melt your ice cream. The ice cream we're working with today is my chocolate rosemary ice cream. As an extra benefit, I've got that recipe on my website. I also got it packed in these really cute little customized containers that started out plain, but I added some washi tape and some stickers to personalize them. I just think this makes a great little gift if you're going to a summer party to make up your own homemade ice cream and bring them in a personalized container. At the end of this, I'm going to show you some ways to also personalize the presentation of the ice cream sandwiches. Just take one of our nice crunchy decoise, flip it over, take a take a, an ice cream scoop. I've got a, a two inch diameter scoop, which is just perfect for these ice cream sandwiches and slightly softened ice cream. It's nice to work with it not rock solid. Put on ample scoop there. And then I use, just use the back side of the scoop to gently press it out to the sides because you want it to look really full when people are looking in on it. You don't want your ice cream to get any much softer than this or it's gonna be hard to fill. Just top it off. And then I'd sit that back in the freezer, wrap it in plastic and put it in an airtight container and then freeze it up solid so that when it's presented for eating, the ice cream is much more firm. Now, let me talk about ways to package these. You know, ice cream sandwiches can be, can be super messy at picnics, but one great way to present them is in these little customized pouches. These are nothing more than little craft paper bags that have been cut down with decorative scissors. So they're just big enough to leave some of the ice cream sandwich exposed. Applied a little washi tape. I'm using red and white. If you added a little blue, it'd be perfect for 4th of July. And then I'm gonna add a little sticker. These stickers came plain and I just found this perfectly sized craft punch to fit them. It said created with love, which I think is appropriate because these were definitely created that way. Stick it in the middle and you've got a really sweet container for these delicious, ice cream sandwiches for your next summer party. Okay, I'm near the bottom of my chocolate ice cream container. I think I can squeak one more ice cream sandwich out of it. You might still love macarons, but I hope you're now a Dacquoise convert and you can see how easy and delicious they can be. A little scarce on ice cream here, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and 
savor the last bite anyway. Till next video, live sweetly.